uh, so what we decided for the group assignment will be, uh, I mean, it will comprise, I think, 20% of your of your coursework, right? If you look at your syllabus uh, outline, okay, uh, the quizzes and the tests will account uh, will account around, I think, it should be around 80% of your uh, of your total marks, okay, and then uh, that leaves another twenty percent for the uh, assignment. Okay, so the reason why I did not uh, upload the assignment instruction because uh, it is still quite un unclear on the the actual things or the the you know uh, what what needs to be done. So you can see here is twenty percent uh, group assignment. So, because we have around 104 students, I think, for the whole, uh, for our group T. So, uh, and since this is a group assignment, so I think uh, I will assign the, the group based on the sequence of your metric numbers as it appears uh, on your, in the, in the portal. Okay, and I think one group should be at maximum five to six students okay, per group. And if you look at the 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 one uh, the original uh, instructions, okay, which I did not uh, actually upload uh, yet in your OL, okay. So this is the original one from the coordinator, okay. But I did not upload them. But the idea is basically to do uh, something like a report, okay. So I mean, uh, so this is the original plan. So the maximum number of pages. Uh, I think uh, maximum 20 pages, not minimum, okay? So I will uh, update this one. Uh, so, uh, okay, the, the plan for the assignment is basically to to, uh, to teach the student or to, uh, you know, examine or evaluate the ability of uh, you all, okay, the students, on... Uh, getting information okay or extract uh, extracting information from 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 uh, materials like papers articles journals okay on on the recent topic in economics okay so this is the, the one that was uh, originally um uh, but to, uh, suggested by the coordinator okay but uh, i mean this is not like something that is fixed so uh, the, the the plan for the assignment is basically uh, you can come up with anything uh, to do with economics okay concept and i mean i i will let uh, each of the group to decide uh, what you want to do okay but basically the, the topic should be within the scope of your principle of economics syllabus meaning that you know if you look, uh, if you look at the what you have learned so far on demand and today we're going to cover a bit on supply. And if you go through the list of the syllabus, even though we have not even covered the, the each and every component of the syllabus, but you can go through them in your uh, in, the, in the syllabus outline and see what kind of uh, economic topics, okay, that you feel that uh, is relevant, and you can uh, you can propose to me the. The, 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 the topic and uh, you know and I will uh, decide whether you can proceed but basically it's, it's not something like uh, as formal as this okay of course you can you can discuss something on the COVID-19 okay on or anything uh, not 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 too heavy because this is just a first semester of first uh, level 1000 people Okay, but I will upload the, the, the final instructions okay, uh, on your OL, okay, and then I'll see uh, and I will uh, also list down the, the group members uh, for the, uh, so, and, and also the contact number, the one uh, appear on the portal. So, if you have changed your, your, your uh, phone number, for example, please, Okay, inform in your uh, among your group members. Okay, because you need to start discussing on the potential topic that you want to do. Okay, but the deadline is basically uh, if you look at uh, the, the original plan here. Okay, 
So it should be submitted around uh, week number 11. So still a long way to go. So, uh, so no need to worry at this stage, okay? Uh, but what you can do, I mean, so uh, wait for me to upload the instructions, okay? And also the group names in your OL, okay? And then, but the idea is basically to come up with a, uh, with a, with an economic topic within the scope of your uh, syllabus, okay, nothing too heavy. For example, if you want to talk about, uh, for example, now um, you are learning on the demand and supply topic, right? Okay, and the previous one is on the, the concept of production uh, possibility frontier, PPF, whether the country uh, being efficient or not, using its resources or not. So, or if, it, uh, if you want to find something more simple to discuss, for example, now on the demand and supply topic, okay, you can discuss something that is relevant to you as, as, a, as a consumer, okay, what, how do you actually decide, okay, what to buy, uh, whether online or offline, okay, on physical store, or online store, okay. But the the nature of the paper must be okay. You must you must based on your I mean the, the construct of your. Uh, okay, the construct of your of your article should be. Okay, the construct of your article should be uh, organized in, in, in such a way that you have the introduction, you know, and your background of your issue and what and your main discussion. And also the main thing is the references, meaning how uh, where do you get your information from? Okay, so basically the, the, the goal of the assignment is to is to see how uh, you all as students okay are able to retrieve information from the from the web, okay, whether and especially using uh, textbooks or articles from the journals, magazines, or even newspaper. So, and and we want to see how you are able to extract this information and discuss okay, any topic okay, within the scope of your syllabus, okay, and then uh, apply them in in uh, and, and then uh, write them in. In a in a uh, uh, in a short paper, okay. So don't worry. At this stage, I will I will finalize. Uh, I will put up the instructions in your OL plus uh, your group members, okay, as it appears in the uh, portal. Okay, so one group should be around five to six students. Uh, so we have around. So we're gonna have around twenty students, okay, uh, for around 20, 20, sorry, 20 to twenty one groups in total. Okay, uh, so that will be towards the end of your, uh, I mean, you should submit around week 11 or week 12, okay, because you're already in week number, this is only week number three, right? Okay, so since we start the assignment late, so I think the deadline should be a bit later than, than that as well, okay? So, okay, so for the time being, uh, let's continue with our uh, lecture, okay? So what we have done, uh, yeah. Okay, since uh, last uh, Thursday, okay, so uh, so I, I just want to recap what, what we did. Uh, so the topic on supply and demand, okay, uh, is you can, if you are confused or, I mean, if you don't have any background on this topic, so there's, there's plenty of uh, materials in YouTube, okay, especially on YouTube where you can find notes on the demand and supply you can just key in the simple concept as it appears in your syllabus and i'm sure you will find at least you know 10 20 videos of lectures uh, discussing on this concept okay so uh, you i mean because this is a very common and, and simple uh, topic okay in economics so there's plenty of uh, resources rather than uh, beside the, the PowerPoint slides that we have uh, in your OL, okay? And uh, if you're wondering whether at this stage you need to buy the, the, the textbook or not, okay, of course, the textbook will help you to understand better, okay? But there's no, but uh, provided that you are, you can uh, utilize your textbook, uh, you, I mean, meaning that you can use your textbook to the fullest because the book is quite uh, thick, okay? So if you, want to spend your money to buy the book make sure you 
uh, utilize the book uh, fully. Okay? okay, so this is what we discussed uh, last Thursday. So we define what is uh, demand, what is market demand, and how do you derive uh, the market and the uh, market demand. And then uh, the, 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 the important part which I stress on last Thursday is the difference between uh, change in demand and change in quantity demanded. Okay, so uh, so that so that is what was discussed last Thursday. Last Thursday. Okay, change in quantity demanded is movement along the line. Uh, change in demand okay, it will involve uh, the curve whether going upward when there is an increase in demand the curve of the demand curve can shift downward. Okay. Okay, so that is the uh, so what what we discuss and also the factors that uh, that cause the uh, the demand curve okay to shift uh, upward or downward. So this what was discussed on uh, the last class. Okay, so anything to anything that relates to changes in income, uh, your preferences, the price of substitute. Okay, so please recall what is substitute and complementary goods and number of buyers. Okay, the more people in the market, okay, if there is an increase in number of customers, uh, then your demand can increase. Uh, and if you expect the price will increase in the future, for example, so you're going to buy more now okay, to avoid paying more in the future. So uh, if, that, if any of the factors can lead to increase in demand, so your demand curve will shift uh, upward okay, from the yellow line uh, to the red line. Okay, but any of the factors that cause the demand to decrease, for example, your income drop, okay, your, uh, your, you want to switch your preference from, okay, from brand A to brand B. So if you switch from brand A to brand B, then the demand for brand A will decrease. Okay? And for substitute and complementary, I think I discussed in detail okay, whether the relationship is positive or negative. For substitute, the relationship is positive, meaning that if the price of the substitute goes up, the demand for the other good will also go up. Okay, for example, um, if you if you look at the example, the, the most common example nowadays is, uh, for example, uh, smartphone brands. Okay, uh, so I gave the example last last on the last class. If the brand, if one brand, the, the price of one brand goes up, okay, so you might switch to another brand. Okay, another substitute that gives you similar uh spec for the smartphone okay so the demand for that particular commodity will increase okay when the other substitute increase so the relationship is positive when the price of substitute goes up uh the quantity demand the quantity demand for the demand for another good will also go up but for complementary uh the relationship is negative if the price of complement goes up the quantity the demand for the other good will go down okay so I think I give the example on um, on if you go to Starbucks, right? Uh, for example, or or any coffee house, okay. Then normally, if you buy coffee, uh, you also want to buy okay, uh, some food, for example, cake, for example. So the price of cake uh, in Starbucks goes up. So the complementary for cake is coffee. So you might want to decrease the demand for coffee. So if the price of one would increase, the other one will go down. The demand will go down for the other complementary good. Okay. So this is what was discussed uh, last uh, Thursday. Okay. So today we're gonna uh, finish uh, finish up with the su uh, supply part, and then we'll see if we can do a few questions on on the demand and supply topic. Okay. Because at the end of the day, uh, your understanding on this concept, okay, will. Uh, you can see whether you understand the concept of demand and supply, increase in demand, decrease in demand when you start okay, doing the exercises. Okay, of course, okay, we, we don't have the time to discuss every single question from the from the resources, okay, from the material. I mean, I've given you, I think, uh, one test bank for microeconomics topic. So take a look at that. So study those uh, questions. Okay. So for supply, uh, it relates to producer. Okay, demand, of course, for uh, us consumers. 
and mm -hmm. for supply is the willing, willingness and ability of sellers okay to produce and sell at different uh, prices okay so at a specific time so uh, the time meaning uh, you know at, at one particular time period okay uh, you have different prices okay, for one particular good okay so and the uh, relationship uh, of between price and quantity uh, supply is positive meaning when the price increase supplier will uh, the, the supply will also increase or the quantity supply will increase okay and of course the assumption of secondary variables or other factors remain constant okay meaning when you want to examine the impact of price of that particular good okay on the quantity supply okay you assume other factors okay for example whether uh stock okay labor i mean whatever factors beside uh price can be assumed to remain constant just like in demand okay so uh and the supply curve the conventional or the the, the common supply curve is upward sloping means that the relationship between p and q is positive okay as the price goes up the quantity will also increase okay so that is uh what you see here okay as the price increase okay the quantity will also uh increase okay so that is uh an upward sloping curve okay so this is uh even though this is on on economics concept okay but if you were to do a, any uh graph okay when the curve is upward sloping like this meaning that the the relationship between the y and x is also positive okay so uh this is a simple concept of demand and supply p goes up q will increase okay? quantity supply will increase so this is very uh just a common sense okay? if you are a seller or producer okay when you are you are motivated by the price okay so if you see that the price in the market now has increased uh, so that uh, motivates the supplier to increase the supply okay or quantity supply will increase okay so that is on the and then supply schedule is just uh, okay so what you see uh, in the demand okay also you have the market supply Okay. So the market is basically the, the when you sum the supply of every supplier okay, at the same price, okay, and then you calculate what is the total quantity supplied at that particular price. So at the price of twelve, okay, this person supplies three, this one supply four, this one supply uh, one zero. I mean the, the suppliers one zero two. So you add three plus four plus one or two, you get one zero nine. Okay, so the same thing as uh, what how you do the demand, the market demand curve. Okay, just the the summation of all the suppliers uh, that supply the particular commodity in the market. Okay, and you get the point uh, by looking at at the same price how many of each of the supplier produce. Okay, and uh, the same thing just like in uh, demand. Okay, uh, if the movement along the curve. Okay. Uh, movement along the curve is what we call change in quantity uh, supply. Okay, if the movement is only happening uh, with along the supply curve, whether the supply, whether the quantity move from C to D or uh, D to B, okay, or A to B, okay, as long as the movement along the the original supply curve, we call this the change in quantity supply. Okay, so change in uh, change in okay quantity uh, change in quantity supply okay so uh, but if it involves uh, the the supply curve to uh, shift whether to the right which indicates there is an increase in supply or the supply curve uh, uh, move to the left okay which indicates that the supply has decreased so in this case, uh, S1 is the original supply curve. Uh, S2 is the new supply curve, meaning the movement to the right indicates uh, positive, okay, or increase in supply. But if you draw one more supply curve here, S2, okay, so which indicates the movement is to the left, which indicates a decrease in supply, okay. So movement to the right, increase in supply, movement to the left, decrease in supply. So and, and what caused the supply curve to shift whether to the right or to the left okay 
So just now we discussed that if uh, movement along the curve, okay, movement along the curve is due to the price of the product itself, okay. But if the curve shift to the right or to the left, so that has to do with uh, factors other than the price, which is uh, change in technology, uh, the price of other goods, okay, number of sellers, uh, expectation of future prices, uh, tax by the government and subsidy by the government or government restrictions, okay. Uh, so I think uh, anything that you, uh, any of these factors that you think will, will make the supply increase now, so that will cause the supply curve to shift to the right okay, and vice versa. For example, okay, number of sellers. So if the number of sellers increase, so means that uh, the total supply will also increase. Huh? Okay. I think if you if you can use the example of uh, these boba drinks, okay, uh, we have nowadays many many uh, many franchise many franchise selling boba drink like uh, e life. Uh, what else? Dulu, uh, I mean now, but previously we have this. Uh, uh, what else besides the life? Uh, was it double bar something, right? So I'm I'm not really a fan of uh, this, uh, this 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 uh, uh, boba drinks, okay? Because it's quite uh, it's very sweet, okay, but and also very expensive. Okay, a glass or a, a cup of um, I think like a large uh, drink can cost you between seven to ten ringgit or even more than ten ringgit for a for a Okay, for a drink, okay, okay, but there are many now, uh, many sellers, okay, selling these boba drinks, okay, whether established brand or new brand. So when there are many sellers selling the same or similar product, okay, so the quantity supply will also, uh, I mean, the, the supply will also increase, lah. Okay, uh, the same thing like for example in the smartphone market, okay, previously maybe ten years ago we only have. A few brands in the market like Samsung, uh, Nokia, okay. Uh, but now you have, I think, more than ten brands, okay, uh, good brands in the market, okay. Especially the Chinese brands, uh, Oppo, uh, you know, Vivo, Realme, and whatnot. Okay? And beside the, beside the established brand uh, from Korea, for example, uh, Samsung, you know, uh, Apple, and, and others, okay. So. The number of sellers means that the number of quantity, of, I mean, the, the, the supply of smartphone will also increase. Lah. So that will cause the supply to shift to the right. Okay. Uh, tax and subsidy. Okay. Tax will make the price uh, become, I mean, the, the tax will make the cost of the, uh, to the supplier to increase. Okay. For example, the government increased the tax to the sellers. So the, the seller now has to pay more tax. So that could uh, increase uh, the cost of production. So in some cases, when the tax can make the supply curve shift to the left, but subsidies, okay, like bantuan baju subsidy, baju subsidy. Uh, when, I mean, talking about in in agricultural sector, so subsidy can can lower the cost of production. Okay, for example, like in Kedah, we have farmers, uh, the the kopedi padi. Uh, Plantation, I mean for for paddy, uh, ni lah tanaman padi lah. Okay, so subsidies can help the 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 farmers to reduce the cost. So that will uh, allow them to produce more. Lah. So subsidies can cause the supply to shift to the right. Okay, uh, expectation of future price. If the seller is expect that in the future the price will go down. Okay, for example, now uh, because of COVID. Okay, uh, and let's say. Uh, people expect that in the future, in the next few months or so, uh, the COVID case will go to a, will, will will continue to increase, or maybe in the in the future, uh, maybe in the near future there will be uh, another uh, MCO or lockdown. People cannot go out as freely as now. So uh, because of that, the price will go down. Okay, because uh, people have uh, you know uh, cannot go out and buy. So when if they expect the price in the future to go down. Then so seller will increase the supply now because they want to take advantage of the current price of the good. Okay, so if they expect the price to increase in the future, so they want to sell less now, but uh, and sell more in the future. So uh, 
the, if the seller expect that the price in the future to decrease, uh, then now the supplier will want to increase the supply. Okay, so expectation about future price can cause the supply curve now to increase or to shift to the right or shift to the left. Okay, so uh, these are other factors. I mean, factors that can that can cause your supply curve to uh, either shift uh, to the right or shift to the left. Okay. So, uh, and movement along the curve is just as what I mentioned just now, is uh, what we call the change in quantity supply, okay? So, take note on this, uh, on the differences in, on the difference in term. Okay? Change in quantity supply, okay? Versus change in supply, okay? So, just like in demand, change in quantity demanded versus change in demand. So, change, if you have the word quantity, uh, supply or quantity demanded that is movement along the curve okay but if you talk about change in supply okay, change in supply okay without the word quantity okay just change in supply so that uh, will cause i mean you are talking about whether the supply curve uh, shift to the right or the supply curve shift to the uh, left okay change in supply okay but if the word uh, you have the word quantity here quantity supply or quantity demanded or demand, you are talking about movement upward or downward uh, in the in the curve. Okay. Or in other words, it's on the on the product own price. Okay. So this is uh, the, the, the part that uh, you need to be clear okay, when we talk about demand and supply. And finally um, uh, when it comes to uh, equilibrium, okay, when you put the two graphs together, supply and demand, when the both supply, uh, when both curve intersect, okay, or cross each other, okay, the point of the intersection here is what we call the equilibrium, uh, price and quantity, okay. So this is where the market will, uh, I mean, where both the consumers and the suppliers, okay, uh, agree, okay, or this is the, the 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 optimum price in the market, okay. So at this uh, equilibrium point. Uh, the price of this particular good is ten dollars, and the quantity, uh, the equilibrium quantity or the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied at one hundred unit. Okay, so that is the concept of uh, equilibrium. Okay, so and uh, once you are in equilibrium, okay, so they can also be uh, okay. Uh, so once you reach at this point, okay, so what happens if uh, so what what is the area between I mean above the equilibrium point on what do you call uh, the area below the equilibrium point? Okay, so you can you can see this uh, concept from two angles. Uh, if you talk if you're talking about supply, okay, from the from the, sorry if you're talking from the from the consumer side, okay, from the demand side. So this area is what we call. Uh, <clears throat> Usually, okay, in, in, uh, look at this slide here. Okay, uh, excess supply versus excess demand. Okay, so in, in economics, okay, in, in, in basic economics, uh, when you talk about surplus, usually you are talking about supply. Okay, you don't talk about surplus in demand. Okay, so, uh, of course, you can, you can, you can also see this from another angle. Okay, but, uh, just to make things see, uh, simple to you, uh, in economics, when you talk about surplus, usually we are relating to supply. Okay, but when we talk about shortages, okay, we are talking about uh, demand. Okay, so the word shortage is uh, must usually refers uh, refers to surplus of supply, whereas the word shortage usually we refer to uh, shortage of demand. Sorry, uh. uh uh, sorry, we, we talk about uh, excess demand. Okay. Uh, or we. Okay, so uh, su surplus of supply, uh, but I mean, basically, this is about supply. Okay. But, okay. Uh, let me go through this, uh, this part again, this slide. Okay. Uh, okay, I think for those who, who, who have uh, background in in, uh, in economics, so this will be quite simple for you to understand. Okay, so let's talk about the point 
uh, the area above the equilibrium uh, PA, as well above the equilibrium point. So at this stage, okay, this is the supply, quantity supply, this is the quantity demanded. Okay. So uh, in other words, supply is more than demand. Correct? Because supply is at this uh, point here. Okay, so and this is your supply point. Okay, so at this point, you see that uh, supply is higher than demand. So if you relate to this, uh, if, you, if supply is more than demand, what we call excess supply. Okay, meaning su supply, uh, the quantity supplied in the market is more than the quantity demanded. Or what we call excess in supply. Okay, but if talking about the area below the equilibrium quantity, at this point, this is your demand and this is your supply. Or in other words, demand is bigger than supply. Or uh, you, can, you can also say excess in demand. Okay, excess in demand means also shortage in supply. So you can, you can see from both angles. Uh, the same thing here, at least uh, when if you're talking about the area above the demand curve, uh, above the equilibrium point, uh, point, this is when supply more than demand, or you can see it as excess in supply, or also shortage in demand. Okay, because supply is more than demand, so supply in excess or demand in shortage. Okay, and vice versa, when uh, the area or the, the part below the equilibrium point. At this stage, demand is more than supply. So any 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 area below this point is what you call excess in demand or shortage in supply. Or in other words, demand is bigger than supply. Lah. Okay. So if you are in the position of uh, above or below, so the pressure, uh, if you are at this stage, so the, uh, so the pressure is for the price to go down. Okay. Because uh, when there is more supply than demand, so price, uh, has the tendency to move downwards towards the equilibrium point. Okay, because supply greater than demand, so suppliers see that there are not many people who want to buy the product at, at the higher price. So the price will, will start to go down, okay? meaning that supplier will start uh, reducing the price, the giving sale, for example, okay? discount. Okay, But if you are talking about the area below the equilibrium uh, point, okay, for example, like at this stage, okay, where demand is more than supply, so at this stage, the, the, the price has the tendency to go up. Why? Because uh, at this, at this uh, around this area, okay, at this point, uh, the price is low, right? So that's why demand is more than supply. So when, when you have high demand, but there are not many suppliers who want to sell, okay, because the price is low. So the tendency is for the price to go up, meaning people are trying to buy the product, but there are not many people selling. So logically thinking, or you know, the, the normal market reaction is when there is more demand than supply, the price will start to increase. Okay, it will start to increase until you reach the equilibrium point again. Okay, so the concept of excess supply uh, above or excess demand below, okay, will cause the uh, the the market always to go back to its equilibrium point. Okay, so this is the concept of excess. Uh, or shortage, okay, in the market, okay. Uh, so the word disequilibrium, okay. If you're not on the on the intersection uh, point, okay, as this one, okay. So this is equilibrium. Any 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 point uh, not on the intersection point is what we call disequilibrium. If we're talking about the area above or the area below here, the the curve. Okay, that, really, that is what we call as disequilibrium. Okay, uh, meaning you have surplus or shortages. Uh, surplus in supply or shortages in uh, supply or you know, shortage in demand. So that is uh, what we call as disequilibrium in the market. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, on the concept of consumer surplus. Okay, consumer surplus is uh, by definition, okay, uh, maximum buying price, the price, uh, maximum buying price minus the price paid. Or in other words, if the difference between what you are willing to pay and what you actually paid. Okay, for example, if you are very thirsty, okay, and you see a shop or a, 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 a grind, okay, or a, a, 
uh, hawker, okay, selling uh, cold drinks, okay. So when you are very very thirsty, okay, if someone asks you how much you are willing to pay for that uh, for that uh, cup of uh, you know uh, cold drink, okay? you say you are you might be willing to pay even uh, ten ringgit, okay, even though the price could only be let's say four ringgit or five ringgit per, per cup, uh, because you are so thirsty, uh, you are willing to pay more, okay, but uh maybe the, the the price that you actually paid to the seller is only four ringgit okay so if you're willing to pay 10 but you actually only pay four so 10 minus four the six ringgit is what we call consumer surplus okay what you are willing to pay uh minus what you actually paid okay so your willingness versus what you actually pay that difference is what we call uh consumer surplus okay so uh and vice versa for producer, uh, I mean, the way, so the area of consumer surplus, uh, okay, the, the simplest way to, to examine the area of consumer surplus is the area, uh, if you look at the demand and supply diagram just now, okay, so this is the equilibrium price in quantity, okay, if you draw one straight line here, okay, and then you, and then uh, where the supply, uh, demand curve intersect the Y axis or the price axis, so you have this one triangle shaded in the blue area here. So this, the whole blue area here is what we call consumer surplus, okay? And you can calculate the whole area here by using the simple uh, triangle formula, okay? Half multiplied by the, uh, the width multiplied by the length, okay? The distance from this point to this point uh, multiplied by the distance between uh, here is 100 minus 0 is 100, okay, the, uh, and then multiply by half. Basically, you are using the the, the half multiply by width multiply by height formula or the triangle area formula, the one that you uh, already learned in your you know, secondary school, okay. Uh, the same thing as producer surplus, uh, the price, the difference between what the, the price uh, seller receive, okay, and the minimum or lowest price that they will have sold the good. Meaning, if you are a seller, for example, okay, and let's say you sell uh, nasi lemak, okay, so let's say you sell the nasi lemak for three ringgit per per packet, okay. But let's say if uh, not on a good day, or let's say uh, if you if you go to a night market or pasar malam, okay, uh, usually you will sell your nasi lemak at three ringgit per packet. But uh, let's say if there are not many customers on that day because of rain, for example, or because of COVID, uh, not many people go out to the night market. And before you close your stall, you want to finish off all of your nasi lemak. So what you will do is you will start selling a bit lower. Okay, but your market price is three ringgit. But if someone asks you, can I buy this nasi lemak for one ringgit? Okay, so and maybe your 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 capital or your modal okay, or the, the cost of your nasi lemak is only 80 cent meaning that you can still sell at one ringgit okay and you can still make some some a very small profit eh? so uh, your what you what you usually sell at three ringgit but what you are uh, minimum okay that you will have sold the, the, the nasi lemak at one ringgit so three ringgit minus one ringgit, that two ringgit is your producer surplus. Okay, uh, the price received minus the minimum selling price. So if the price received is three ringgit uh, minus what you are willing to sell, okay, the minimum the minimum that you are willing to to, to sell that will be your uh, the difference between that will be the producer surplus. And I think for Asian people, okay, even uh, especially like in Malaysia, okay, when you go to uh, you know, night market, or for example, if you want to buy, okay, uh, you know, if you got like bazaars, for example, during festive season in Ramadan, okay, uh, people start to bargain, okay. The seller put up the price of one, let's say, one, one, uh, one uh, baju kurung, okay, or one dress, okay, and you think that the price is a bit too high, okay. So, if you are the kind of uh, customer that, that love to bargain, you will start to uh, reduce the price, okay? So if, don't, if you don't reduce the, if you don't bargain, the seller will only sell you as what the price uh, stated on the on the price tag, okay? So let's say that baju kurung or that dress costs you one, I mean, the seller put, put up the price as 100 ringgit, 
pay 100 ringgit but if you don't bargain meaning you will need to pay 100 ringgit lah okay but if you bargain with the seller and the seller uh, decide to reduce up to 80 ringgit so that is the minimum that the seller will sell okay in order to make some profit so 100 minus 80 20 ringgit that will be the seller's uh, producer surplus okay because if uh, meaning that uh, if they, the customer don't bargain you sell at 100 but if the customer start to bargain the minimum that the seller will go down is uh, let's say up to 80 ringgit so 100 minus 80 20 ringgit will be the producer surplus okay so and um, okay so the rest is just uh, you can you can read uh, on your own okay on this uh, notes here okay any question uh, so far Very, very simple, right? This uh, demand and supply concept. Okay, so what I will uh, do in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, we're going to uh, look again at the... Um, at the... Okay, some of the... Questions okay from past years. Uh, so we did. Uh, okay, so this is what uh, we did. I think last, uh, not last Thursday. I think last uh, Monday, right? Okay. So we discussed some uh, when we finished on the topic of uh, uh, the PPF. Okay, uh, I think on the second chapter. Okay, so now we are. So uh, again, so I need your part, uh, your participation on. I think the, the the next few questions will still be on the topic of PPF. Okay, so we will go through this question very quickly. Okay, and then uh, because I think I want to discuss more on the on the demand and supply uh, topic. Okay. Okay, so let's start with. Uh, uh, okay, so let's do question nine first. What will be the uh, answer for for nine? Okay, uh, the law of increasing opportunity cost okay, is evident in the PPF because, okay, uh, so we discussed on this thing uh, because of the the shape of the PPF is uh, concave, okay, or something like this. Uh, okay, so as you move along the, the curve, okay, so if you have watched the video that I uploaded on your OL, okay, so you will get this, uh, I mean, you will know that the answer is clearly A. Uh, Okay, um, how about the second question? Okay, which point indicates the resources are not fully uh, utilized? Okay, I think this is, you can figure out in less than one second, right? So, uh, it's clearly that the point C is below. Okay, uh, so that should be, uh, but if talking about this point here, okay, E is when, uh, E is not possible because uh, it is beyond what is available for the country. Okay, so uh, E is outside the point, okay, but any point along is when the resources are fully uh, utilized. Okay, okay so the same, uh, Refer to figure one point dash represent and what point?
okay so point uh, here right point e right okay okay point e represents unattainable okay meaning you cannot achieve point uh, point e right? okay because it is beyond what is available right? as i mentioned just now okay uh, ppf shift as what question 12 Okay, uh, the PPF shift. Uh, shift means that it moves upward. Okay, so uh, for example, like this one. So, what do you mean by shift? Okay, so we discussed the concept of uh, the PPF can go upward. Okay, when uh, shift means the curve shift uh, upward to the uh, right, usually. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about uh, positive shift, means that the curve of the PPF shift to the uh, shift upward. Okay, so that is what the word shift is. Okay. So what? So what the? Um, okay. So the answer should be A. Lah. Okay. Technology changes. Okay, because. Changes in technology can, can allow you to produce more with the same amount of resources. Okay, so uh, to that will cause the PPF to uh, shift taste and preference because this one not not uh, this one got to do with demand. Okay, but because when you, when you talk about uh, supply, I mean the, the ability of uh, the country to produce more, it got to do with the whether you find uh, the country find new resources, for example. Okay, or increase in the number of uh, population, okay, the number of labor. So that will cause, uh, you know, the PPF to, so, uh, to ship upward. So that will be here. Okay. Okay, and then, uh, okay, uh, 13. So this is what to do with your uh, demand and uh, supply topic. Okay, so what is consistent with the law of demand? Okay, so I see that you chose B, a decrease in the price uh, of cake caused the increase in quantity of cakes demanded. Okay, so that should be the uh, correct answer. Okay, so... Okay, so this is, uh, okay, how about 14? Okay, uh, the printer price will reduce the demand for toner. Okay, uh, 
increase in the price of uh, increase in the printer price. Uh, so you got two commodity printer and toner. So, uh, so I think you should understand. I mean, this is logical, right? Uh, printer and toner are complementary goods, okay? Because increase, uh, as I mentioned, for complementary, the ratio should be negative, meaning when the price of one commodity increase, the other one uh, will decrease, okay? So when the price of printer goes up, uh, toner will decline uh, on the demand, okay? Uh, 15. Okay, uh, the price of orange has risen dramatically. Uh, which of the following is likely to uh, happen? Okay, so you choose. Uh, which one? A, B, C, or D? A-I-C-A, I-C-D. Okay, so uh, between A and D, so which one is correct? Okay, so it should be what? It should be A, right? okay, because you're talking about the price of orange and then it relates to quantity supply, okay, movement along the curve. Okay, if you talk about D, then that that is factors beside the price of orange. Uh, let's say uh, you know uh, the factors which I mentioned just now: tax, subsidy, technology, and whatnot. Okay, so this one is the movement uh, along the supply curve. Okay, whether the, the the quantity goes up or goes down. So increase in the price of orange, quantity supplied will uh, increase. Okay. So that is uh, what it is about. Supply of orange increase. If you're not talking about the price of orange, let's say you talk about uh, the technology to produce orange, for example, has increased. Okay, or the government is uh, giving subsidy to the producer, uh, to the uh, uh, those who uh, tanam, I mean, who plant oranges. Okay, or anything that can cause the supply to increase, uh, other than the price. Okay, but Price relates to quantity supply. Okay, uh, sixteen.
Okay, so suppose that the consumers, okay, so we're talking about consumers, not producers. Consumers expect the price of the product to decrease, meaning it will get cheaper in the future. So if you are the consumer and you expect that, let's say, in, in next month, the price of uh, whatever, lah, I mean, whatever that, that I mean, uh, let's say, barang, uh, good, good X, okay, will decrease or will fall in the future. Or let's say if you are, you know, frequent customers of Shopee. So Shopee will make a sale uh, in, in the next few weeks time. So you expect that the price of your whatever product that you want to buy will will uh, got some, I mean, will will decrease, will, uh, will become lower lah in, in the next few weeks time. So are, are you going to buy more now or are you going to buy more in the future? Okay, so of course you're going to buy less now. So the current demand uh, of the product will decrease. Okay, meaning you're going to, now you, you got, I mean the customer will buy less lah because they want to buy more in the future when the price is actually has decreased. Okay, so this got to do with demand. Okay? Nothing to do with supply because we're talking about consumer's expectation, not, not from the producer side. Okay, so it should be uh, B. Okay, uh, 17, okay, about consumer surplus. So I think this is uh, okay, a simple calculation. You shouldn't be, if you get this one wrong, okay, I suggest that you should, okay, uh, bang your head on the wall, okay, uh, 20 times, okay, uh, because this is just 20 minus 5. Okay, the difference between what you want, uh, you are willing to pay versus what you actually paid. So, uh, okay, you are willing to pay twenty dollars, but what you actually pay at uh, only five. Okay, so the answer should be okay. Maybe one last question. Oh, this one is on elasticity of demand. Okay, never mind. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so topic uh, question 18, what to do with the next chapter? So we're going to continue on the elasticity of demand next uh, next Thursday. Okay. Or oh, topic number four. Okay. So uh, of course, okay, uh, go through the other test banks, the I mean, questions that I give you. Okay. Because we don't have time to discuss every single question in the class. Okay. So you need to do your own, uh, you know, uh, revision or exercises. Okay, so uh, I'll see you next, uh, inshallah, next, uh, uh, next Thursday. Okay, so uh, usual, okay, as usual, I'll upload the recording uh, online in your OL and YouTube link. Okay, so